all my lovelies, and welcome to another episode of The Mom Vibe. I'm your host, Kira, and this is going to be a little bit of a special episode, at least in my opinion. So to all you new moms, old moms, veteran moms, moms in the thick of it, moms soon to be, and all the moms in between, grab your favorite comfort drink of choice, whether that's wine, tea, or something with caffeine, and let's have a little chat. So, this is the first episode of 2024. Ha ha, crazy. It is already 2024. Feels like 2023 went by in a blink of an eye. So, I know I said that this is going to be kind of a special episode, and uh, I'm pretty sure y'all are wondering why. Well, I'm here to start off with the announcement that me and my husband are expecting baby number four. So this episode is all about pregnancy, what to expect, what pregnancy has been like in the past versus now, and kind of just for all you expecting moms out there or people who are thinking about becoming a mom, kind of what pregnancy is like. It's a very important part of what a lot of mothers experience. Not every mother, of course, because, you know, families are all made differently. But a good portion of mothers who become mothers are people who've been pregnant. So like I said earlier, this is my fourth pregnancy. I don't know what it is yet. Me and my husband don't know. Will we find out? Probably because I'm the anxious type and I like to plan and make sure that we have things that we need. I don't like being unprepared. So far, this pregnancy has been manageable is the best way that I could say this. My first pregnancy with my son was the worst. Absolute awful. I could not hold anything down. Like nothing. Everything came up. I mean, I could eat lemons, sometimes slushies. Oh, but it was awful. Seven months, just everything right back up. It was impossible to eat. It was absolutely miserable. And the anti-nausea medication just, yeah. That didn't work either. (laughs) With my second pregnancy, the nausea itself, minimal at best. It was pretty okay. And the pregnancy was pretty okay. I was tired. That was pretty much it. I just didn't have an appetite, I guess. With my second pregnancy, it was weird. And then my third one, I had a little bit of nausea. But again, it was very minimal. And I started taking B12 and B6. And it kind of just ebbed away. So my fourth one here... I am nauseous all the time. I'm not throwing everything up, which is good, but eating is such a chore. I'm looking at food and my body thinks it's going to hurl it back up. So I just, I don't want to eat. I did our baby announcement for this one at Disneyland. And at Disneyland, there's so much good, yummy food. And I couldn't eat any of it because just all the smells were making me so nauseous. It was terrible absolutely the worst. I was having the hardest time doing anything and I've been so tired. I just keep conking out in like the middle of the day. And I don't know what it is about this. Like at first I didn't even feel pregnant. It was really weird. This one is planned. So the only reason why I ended up testing was because it was like a day before. And I was like, well, might as well test and and see because I just wanted to know. And then found out I was pregnant. Very happy. And it didn't take until I think I really hit like eight weeks that I started feeling nauseous. Like I felt tired, sure. But like the nausea, I was like, oh, this one seems to be breeze. I'm fine. And then it started. And it hasn't stopped. And now I'm like almost 14 weeks, 14 weeks at the time I'm recording this. And I am, I've already, I'm so done with this, but it's just begun. And that is so fun. So to all my other fellow mothers out there who've had multiple pregnancies, how did your pregnancies differ? Did it seem like each one was like individual and different? Or did, if you have more than one boy, more than one girl? Did they kind of feel like similar pregnancies with similar genders? I have a feeling this one is going to be a boy just because the pregnancy is so similar to my first one. But who knows? Who knows what it's going to be? You know, that brings up a thing about like how to announce it and tell to people and how you would like hide it as well. So when I found out that I was pregnant, it was early to mid-November. So that's before Thanksgiving, before the birthday blitz, before Christmas. And I had to somehow manage to get through Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and all the birthday stuff without raising suspicion to my family that I was pregnant. 
it was very hard to do, especially when I was like looking at food and not wanting to eat it and not having a good time and just being tired and trying to avoid them like the plague. And it didn't help because this is my fourth pregnancy. I had to start wearing maternity clothes like eight weeks. And I don't know if that's because I was just bloating severely or if I really started having a baby bump. I think it was more along the lines I started having a baby bump because when we did announce it to my in-laws, my mother-in-law was, you know, I was just telling, you know, my husband that you look like you put on a little bit of weight and I didn't even think that's what it could be. So yes, it was noticeable that I looked a little chunkier than normal. So it wasn't just in my head, but uh, gosh, do I feel like a whale already. When you're like, Eight weeks pregnant. You know, you don't usually show that early, but like fourth one, eight weeks, and you already see a visible bump and you just, you feel so big and so self-conscious already, especially when you're trying to hide it. And it is the worst feeling because you like, do I look fat or will people assume that I'm pregnant? Lucky for me, what saved me being able to hide this pregnancy is I have a long torso. So my long torso and the baby carrying lower, I just looked like I gained a little more weight in my stomach area rather than it being looking more along the lines of a baby bump. And the funny thing is my, my mother-in-law did think that we were going to announce a pregnancy at Christmas. That's that's what her thought was because my son had said something along the lines of there he was getting a baby sibling after his youngest sister turned three. Mind you, we had not told my son that there was a baby in mommy's belly yet. He just told that to my mother-in-law with no prompting, no no reason, rhyme or reason. He just said it to her. Kids, I guess they pick up on things a lot more than we think they do. So she was thinking that we might announce it at Christmas or the Christmas party or whatnot, and we didn't. And so when we didn't, she just assumed we weren't actually pregnant. I had planned since the moment we found out that we were going to do the announcement at Disney. With the announcement at Disney, how we did this, I had the perfect plan. We were all going, me, husband, our three kids, and our two in-laws. We were going to Disneyland at the end of the first week of January. Great. So I went ahead and bought us all custom matching t-shirts for Disney. And I gave... My mother-in-law and my father-in-law, their shirts for Christmas. And on the front of their shirts, you know, it had Nana and Papa. But on the back, it said, proud Disney Nana, proud Disney Papa. So they were none the wiser. But on my shirt on the front, it said, mommy plus baby. And on my youngest child, her shirt says, big sis Aurora. And on the back of all of our shirts, mine, my husband's, and my three kids, it says, expecting number four in 2024. It was a masterful plan. I could not wait. It was absolutely exciting. And every day that I got closer, we'd have this countdown, me and my husband. So many days until everyone knows. So many days. And even like on the drive from like the hotel to Disney itself, we're sitting there looking at each other. Everyone's going to know. It's a matter of moments. Everyone, they're going to know. They're going to find out. It also happened to be a little bit of a chilly day. So when we got out of the car, we were right behind them in the parking lot. So we ended up parking right next to them. So we get out of the car. My two oldest already have their jackets on. I put my jacket on and I have a little book bag on. And then my youngest is in the stroller. So the only shirt visible with the visible thing of expecting number four in 2024 was my husband's. So we're sitting there walking with our in-laws and me and my husband are just waiting, waiting for them to notice. He's walking in front of us, strolling the baby along. No reaction yet. They hadn't noticed. We get to the elevators slash escalators because if you've never been to Disneyland, you can either go down the elevator from the parking lot or you could go down the escalators. Well, me and my husband went down the elevator because we had the stroller, but my two older kids wanted to go down the escalator. So Nana and Papa took them down the escalator. And this this is the part that makes me a little bit sad. Me and my husband did not actually get to see the first reaction of my in-laws. Because as we were getting into the elevator, that's when my father-in-law noticed my husband's shirt. And he got on the escalator and told his wife, my mother-in-law, you know, we get down there, we, we meet them and she hugs us. And I would l- have loved to see how that conversation went. We weren't there. So I don't know. I just know that they were not expecting it. And it was great. 
man, it's a little disappointing when you have like this whole big idea set up and then you don't get the payoff of seeing the reaction. Oh, but it was absolutely fun to walk around Disney with those shirts and being all excited and finally talking to them about it and posting it to the group chat of the family to let everybody know and announced it on some of my um social platforms like Discord that I'm on with like my um voice acting servers that I do and whatnot. And just everybody's happy. Yay! So now everybody knows baby number four is on the way. And it has been a roller coaster to get here. I would love to know some of the ideas that maybe you came up with with announcing to your family of how you were expecting. Let's see. Think about it. I did each announcement a little bit different with each child. My first one, we bought gifts. We bought my mother, though, to be fair, My mother is one of the first people that usually knows about my pregnancy. That's the kind of the first person that I talked to about it. I was planning on not telling her, but like life happened and I ended up telling her anyway. So she had she had known since like I was about six weeks pregnant. But with this first one, she knew that the possibility of me being pregnant. So I got her a mug that said that she was going to be a grandma because she didn't want to be a grandma. She was too young to be a grandma at that time. She has now embraced Graham Graham and being a grandmother, but at first she did not want to be. (laughs) She wanted to age kicking and screaming, so being a grandma was not on the list of not aging. So grandma for a while. Um, My dad, we got him a pocket watch because my my dad, he loves pocket watches. And we got it and on it, it said grandpa in big letters. It's a bittersweet memory to think about that, um, announcing it. I haven't talked to my father in a month. He doesn't know about baby number four yet. But I do remember when he opened that box and he was like, oh, this is so nice. And then he read it. And looked at us and said, does that say what I think it says? That's one of my favorite memories of being able to show that because he wanted to be a grandpa so bad. His sisters were, you know, grandparents already. And he was, you know, the last one that hadn't had any grandchildren yet. And, you know, he'd have, he has adult kids So when I was able to finally make him a grandpa, I won't forget that. It's one of those small memories that I do cherish and I do really enjoy. With my oldest daughter, I kind of accidentally got pregnant with her. I ended up getting pregnant about three or four months after my son was born. So I found out like the morning of when my mother-in-law had come to visit us. We were going to the movies later. So I put on one of my old maternity shirts that says baby on the shirt. And I grabbed one of my sketchbooks and wrote on there, I'm going to be a big brother. So when we walked out of the movie theater, I had taken my jacket off and we're like, hey, do you you like my shirt? And it hits her. We are pregnant again. And then she took a picture of us with us holding our son and the sign that says I'm going to be a big brother. And that was how we announced our oldest daughter. With my current youngest right now, the announcement for her was a little video skit. Me and my husband had really gotten into D&D by that time. Yes, Dungeons and Dragons. So in this little video skit, I walked up to my husband and said, can we have another baby? And he looks at me and goes, roll for persuasion. So I rolled and got a not 20. For those who don't play D&D, a nat 20 or a natural 20 is basically a critical success, meaning you automatically succeed with whatever you're doing if you get a natural 20, usually, in Dungeons & Dragons, how the game is played. So obviously, if I got a natural 20, then we get another baby. So then I look at him and I go, so what do we do now? And he goes, I got it. And takes a bunch of dice and pretends to roll it in his little rolling chamber. And the dice spell out like a march in numbers as in like the kind of due date that the baby should be here. So that was how we announced our our third one. But I think the fourth one is definitely my favorite because we kept it this like a secret the most. Like his mom had an inkling with number three and number two and number one. Like they they are kind of all like we're seeing it coming. But the fourth one, absolutely out of nowhere, sort of. It was a successful reveal nonetheless, and we surprised everybody, and we got to do it at Disney. Who else gets to say they've done a baby reveal at Disney? Probably a lot of people, but not for our family. So I'm going to take that as a win.
<laughs> Pregnancy is like really hard, you know? It's it's really scary too because you're always scared that you move the wrong way, you do the wrong thing, something's going to happen to your baby. That's like the scariest thing. When, when the baby starts moving, now you have to count all the kicks. You have to worry if you're eating enough, if you're eating the right things. And especially when you have little ones, you're also like worried how they're going to take it. Especially if you have a daughter like mine who is necessarily not really verbal and doesn't quite understand not to hit things, how she's going to react if we bring a new baby home. She isn't super like pushy or like violent towards me, so I'm not worried about her like harming the baby that's in my belly currently and whatnot. But after the baby gets here, because her love language is violence, it is a bit concerning. My oldest daughter, she's already claiming that the ba- it's her baby that's in mommy's belly, and she's very excited. But that makes me worried that if she's just going to try to take the baby while I'm trying to feed the baby and things like that. There's always like these what ifs when you're pregnant. What if complications happen? What if it's multiple? And you never know. And then as you sit there developing this human for nine, ten months that you're doing it, because it's 40 weeks, which is kind of like 10 months. So here you are developing this child for this huge amount of time. And you get that whole time to think about what kind of person are they going to be? What, what would they be in the future? How are you going to mess up this kid? Because you're not a perfect person. Are you going to traumatize the kid like your parents traumatized you? How are we going to do better? How are we not going to be completely overwhelmed by four kids? Was this a mistake having a fourth kid? We wanted a fourth kid. We, we felt ready for a fourth kid. Financially, we're okay. But it's this really scary thing of deciding to have a baby. And some people don't even plan it. And they, you know, they sit there going, can I raise this child? We did not plan this child. We aren't ready for it. What do we do? And it's moments like those where it's really just you have to have the strength to be brave and to keep going no matter how scary it is. All the what ifs, all the what could happens. I mean, with my oldest son, I went preeclampsic. And my daughter, I was hypertensive. Uh, My youngest daughter, I could barely walk when I was in my third trimester because she was so big. She was going to basically snap my pelvis in half. It was very painful being nine pounds and nine ounces that she was. She was a big baby, could not handle that. And now here we are with the fourth one and I'm having a hard time eating and I'm worried I'm going to get preeclampsic again because if I don't eat, I'll get stressed out and I have to make sure that I'm eating enough protein. I'm already getting headaches because the lack of food that I'm eating because I just can't get myself to eat the food I need to. The smells are putting me off. Just the look of the food is making me feel just awful and I'm sluggish. And I have to do homework with the kids and I'm trying to start up this career at the same time because I really, by the time that the baby gets here, I really want my husband to be able to quit his current job so he doesn't have to do the night shift anymore. And he can figure out what he really wants to do with his life because right now he's in this transitional period where he doesn't quite know what he's going to do next. And everything feels really uncertain. But the one thing I do know is that this baby is a blessing. And I will love them unconditionally like I love all of my kids. And that one day when they get older, that my relationship with them is going to be so much better than the relationship I have with my parents. I know I can't do everything perfect and I know that I'm going to mess some things up. But I'm hopeful that they will always be able to come to me no matter what. And that they will love me like my kids love their Nana and Papa. Like how my husband still loves his parents and are very close with them. And that's all that a mother could hope for is that at the end of the day, she teaches her children to love and love unconditionally despite the world being big and scary. To love themselves, to love the people that care about them, and to care about the people that they love. And be able to express that and express their self-love and self-kindness and everything that they need. Of course, I want them to be productive humans when they're adults. And I won't have to worry about them and what they're doing with their life. But no matter what they do, I'll always worry. Because I hope that despite not growing up knowing what unconditional love was, despite growing up always feeling like I needed to prove myself to be enough, even now dealing with trying to convince myself that I'm enough no matter what, they won't do that to themselves. 
that they'll just love themselves unconditionally, especially this last one that we're planning. And we are planning this one to be the last one. Any more after this is divine intervention. I do want my kids to know that no matter what they choose in life, they will always have arms to go back to. And no matter what they choose, no matter how much I disagree, I want them to know that they always have a safe place in my arms, that I will always love them. And if they feel that, then I've done my job. And that is the part that helps me get through the fear. That is the thing that keeps me focused. I may not be the most affectionate or physical person like I want to be with my kids right now, but I make sure that they know that I love them and I try to communicate in a way that I'm able to. And if they can understand I love them, then I've done my job. Remember that you can always interact with this video by catching me on Twitter, which is Kira E. Voice, or you can catch me on my TikTok with the similar name, Kira E. Voice, or even my website, kiraevoice.com. We also have a Discord and a Reddit. So go ahead and tell me about your pregnancy experiences or what you're expecting for your pregnancy experiences in the future. I can't wait to hear from you all. So, ladies, don't forget to embrace the chaos. Cherish all the moments and memories and stay perfectly imperfect. This is Kira signing off, and I will see you next chat.